A record so heavy you can't pick it up. Kick it. What was the greatest hard rock heavy metal compilation record of all time? Well, I got that answer for you. Real quick, compilations are kind of like the mixtapes back in the day. Mixtapes are old, so are compilation records. This is just like one tenth of my habit. We usually put out a compilation record is trying to you know, support the band. Sometimes you get a big band and then you put a whole bunch of like lesser known bands, try to help them out with a big band name on it. Um, you know, all through the eras. This one's from the late 60s. Of course, looks like the late 60s just threw up on that record cover. It has The Who on it. It has Tommy James and the Shondells, the Peppermint Rainbow. So like some big bands and then some bands you're like, who? Who the hell are they? Uh, 80s was a was a prime time for uh, compilations. A lot of my 80s comps I just bought because of the uh, artwork on the record itself. It's just what says 80s more than like blasting off with, <laughs> with a guitar there. 38 Special, John Cougar, Genesis, Kansas. There's another one. Of course, this... this bleh. If the 80s threw up on a record cover, that would be it. The Beat, Sparks, Split Ends, Flock of Seagulls, Kim Wilde, Depeche Mode, Billy Idol. And sometimes the comp albums were just because a record label is trying to support all their artists and promote who they got. Way back in the day when Enigma was uh, ruling the world with like Mojo Nixon, Dead Milkman, Agent Orange. Great, great stuff there. This is... This is number two. I'm looking out for number one. And sometimes just the music scene is just trying to promote themselves. The Chicago class of 85, rock and roll there. Uh, way back in the day, Chicago Loop. Sadly, no more. The Chicago Loop classic rock radio station. They used to put out compilations supporting bands. And of course, my favorite of the Chicago comp series was the Octune series. All the punk bands in Chicago, there's... There's great compilation. This is number three there. And sometimes for a cause, a lot of bands would get together and put songs on a comp, like the uh, Animal Liberation there. And of course, you can't mention record compilations or CD compilations for a lot of you without Now That's What I Call Music. Now That's What I Call Music, I think, is up to 110 editions right now. This is number one when it actually came out on LP. Uh, people like Phil Collins, Tina Turner, Culture Club, Men Without Hats, Men at Work. So a lot of, you can tell that that came out in the 80s. There. Now for hard rock and heavy metal, I do have some nice comps. This is one, I think this came out in like 90, 91. I think this was more or less in the UK. I got it because it has Love, Hate, Blackout in the Red Room. I love Love, Hate. It has some other uh, lesser known bands as well. But from way back in 1984, I recently acquired this not too long ago. Giants of Steel, of course, Anvil there on the cover. Got Raven, Merciful Fate, Judas Priest, Accept, Metallica, Venom, just the list goes on and on. This is a heavy one. Now we're talking about 1984. We're going to talk about my favorite and I think the best hard rock heavy metal compilation of all time. What are you going to call it? You're going to call it the Masters of Metal. Yes, you are. Well, let's just go track by track why I think this is the best. It starts off with Trashed from Black Sabbath. Now, this is the edition of Black Sabbath that had. Ian Gillen, of course, from Deep Purple, screaming and singing on that. Uh, it's from the album Born Again. I think the only one with Ian Gillen on it. This is a... Uh, it always confused me, Black Sabbath, as a kid. Um, of course, like, this came out in early 84, and I probably picked it up right when it came out. At that time, on my turntable, I was listening to a lot of uh, Motley Crue, Shout the Devil, Ozzy Osbourne, Bark at the Moon... And I was starting, you know, wanting to get a little heavier stuff, so I probably picked this up, uh, hoping it would expose me to some of the groups that I heard, but really hadn't heard that much of. Black Sabbath, I knew, is like Ozzy's first band. And, you know, War Pigs and Sweet Leaf and Affairs Were Boots. And I knew, like, Ronnie James Dio also sung in it. It was just kind of confusing as a kid to put all these groups, like Rainbow, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, did, did like, everyone have a chance to play in these bands or what? But... Trash and Black Sabbath, Ian Gillen, there was a video on MTV, it was just awesome, I just loved his screaming and stuff, so I wasn't really thinking, wow, this is like true Black Sabbath, but whatever version this was, this was an awesome song. Next up was Mean Street from Y&T, I just started hearing about them around this time, it's actually from their fifth album, Mean Street, so that band's been around for a while by the time this came out, and that was another awesome song. After that, Breaking the Chains from Dokken, Breaking the Chains... Uh, was their debut album, of course, the big song off of it, so got included on this. Now, this comp came from uh, KTEL. KTEL <laughs> did a lot of like cheesy comps and stuff like that, but good old KTEL records there. 
throw that there. Uh, Who's Buying a Door from Zebra? That was from their 83 self-titled album. Zebra, their first two albums are just excellent. You know, if it's a band you've always kind of heard of but haven't really checked out by now, check them out. Who's Behind the Door is a great song. Rainbow in the Dark from Dio. Now I'm like, oh yeah, he was the Black Sabbath. And I think I had an Elf album from him too. And then, you know, this is from his first proper solo album, uh, Holy Diver. Put Rainbow in the Dark on there. Screaming in the Night from Crocus. This is their seventh album. From their seventh album, Headhunter. Screaming in the Night, Crocus. Uh, Crocus was one of the bands that I picked this up for. Um, probably the, them and uh, Zebra, where I may have seen their video on MTV, may have not. I just wanted you know to have that song, uh, but I didn't really own any full LPs by them at this time. Ending side one is Lick It Up from Kiss. Of course I knew Kiss. I knew Kiss with all the makeup. And this was the, from Lick It Up, of course, where they stripped it all off and got uh, Eric Carr and Vinnie Vincent joined the band. Lick It Up by Kiss. Side two started off with Street of Dreams. That's from their seventh album is Rainbow, Bent Out of Shape. Third and final one with Joel and Turner. I actually am a big Joel and Turner fan. I love his three albums with Rainbow. Uh, he has a solo album that goes a little bit more on the pop thing. Pup Pup Dog's got great heavy metal hair, but oh, she doesn't chase that cat every time I put the tripod on. Stop chasing the cat. I know what your job is a dog to chase the cat, but you have a hole upstairs to chase the cat. Stop hitting the tripod. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. She's heavy metal. She doesn't care. Pup up the rescue dog, everyone. Now I have to pay her a royalty appearance fee. Pup up the rescue dog. Where was I? Street of Dreams Rainbow. Third from the time that Rainbow had Joel and Turner on it. Love Straight Between the Eyes, the album before this. Um, it's just a great song. And it was. Uh, it, it's really nice to kick off side two because it, it starts off with kind of like this keyboard and this laid back you know drum beat st starting to uh, slowly build into the song so it's nice to build into that side with that song and of course 1982 Iron Maiden put out Number of the Beast first album with Bruce Dixon of course they started to appeal to a whole nother heavy metal audience with him uh, their song Run to the Hills of course is probably like their breakthrough song I would think of their early career uh, Run to the Hills, Iron Maiden is on here, song number two. Song number three is Tom Sawyer from Rush. From their eighth record, Moving Pictures. They actually put out signals after that, and you could have argued that Subdivisions should have been on this, because it's closer to the time that this came out in 84. But for some reason, they went with Tom Sawyer. Probably because if you think of Rush back then, for people that weren't Rush fans, us Rush fans think of a million other songs before Tom Sawyer. But if you think of Rush and you're not really a Rush fan, of course you're thinking of Tom Sawyer's. That's probably why they threw that on this. And from their sixth album, Never Surrender, Triumph with World of Fantasy. Triumph was a band, thankfully, that in the Chicago area, The Loop used to play lots of Triumph. So to me, they weren't too obscure or this band that wasn't played a lot. But with your Sticks and your Ario and your Foreigner, the radio station I listened to would play a good amount of Triumph. So I always thought of them as equal to a lot of other bands. They got overlooked a lot in the scene, I think. World of Fantasy is a great Triumph song. Second to last, You Can't Stop Rock and Roll from the second Twisted Sister album called Can't Stop Rock and Roll. It's a great song. And to me at this point, uh, because this is before like We're Not Gonna Take It and all that, Twisted Sister was a band that was like I thought was a lot kind of harder for some reason at that time. And I thought, oh, this is a good way to kind of just check them out and see if I want to buy a whole album of their material. And then it closes with Dancing in the Street by Van Halen. Uh, Van Halen's got a lot of great songs. Why they would pick a cover song, I don't know if the uh, the group even knew this was happening. That they could have, KTEL could have just asked the album label, "Hey, do you have a song you guys want to throw on it by your band Van Halen?" And they threw that one out because it's poppy and appeal. I have no idea, but horrible choice, I think. That's the only bad part of this record, I think, is their cover. Uh, Dancing on the Street, which was written by three people, and one of them was the great Marv Gaye, who wrote that song, I think, way back in 63, 64-ish. Van Halen's catalog up until this point was just amazing. Probably should have picked another song. But even with that weak element on the last, this, I think, hands down, is the best hard rock, heavy metal compilation. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for all your subscribing. Hope everyone's New Year's kicking off to a good start. And uh, let me know what compilations that you like, because I'll tell you, it's going to be hard to beat this one. You got Triumph, you got Rush, you got Black Sabbath, you got Kiss. Thanks for watching.